when you focus on the breath, we're focusing on the force of life. We can go without food for a couple of days, go without water for, for a while, but we can't, can't go very long without breathing. This is what keeps us in touch with the body. So we can use the body, we can use the body to learn about the world and act in the world. So pay careful attention to the breath. Look at the quality. Does it feel nourishing? If it doesn't, what would be required for it to be nourishing? Longer, shorter, deeper, more shallow? Or just more attention? We usually don't pay much attention to it. We take it for granted. After all, if we don't focus on the breathing, it'll pretty much do, do it on its own. So we think that we don't have to worry about it. But if you give it some attention, you'll see that it has a lot of potentials, creating a sense of well-being here it's like that can suffuse through the body. And when the mind has a good place to stay in the body, it's more willing to settle down. And when it settles down, then it can see itself clearly. Otherwise, it's running around. And all it sees as it runs is its shadows, either running before it or running behind it. When we sit down and are with the breath right here, we can see awareness in the present moment right here. And we can see where that awareness is going, which intentions it goes for, which perceptions. And you can begin to ask yourself, why? When I go for a certain thought, where does it lead? And if it leads to a place that's not really good, why do I go there? What are the perceptions you've developed around that kind of thinking? There are so many things we do again and again, and we realize that they're not really all that satisfying. Yet we fall for them again. Because we haven't really looked carefully at well, what is it that makes us go for them. The Buddha calls us looking for the allure. If you really want to know your own mind, look for the different allures that it, it goes for, the bait on the hook. And why I say that sometimes you know that something is bait and there's a sharp hook, but you still go for it. You have to look into that. Now, being with the breath in the present moment puts you in a better position to see this and to do something about it. Because if the only pleasures you know are the ones that have hooks. You think that's part of pleasure. You just have to accept that. But the Buddha says there are a lot of pleasures that don't have hooks. And one of them is the pleasure that comes from getting in touch with the breath and going to know the breath, cultivating the breath. So try to cultivate this awareness, the awareness of the breath in the present moment. Because it puts you in a position of power, where you have more and more control over your own mind. And when you have more control over the mind, you have more control over your life. This is a really good place to be, a very fruitful place to be. So give it some time. After all, if the breath has been ignored all this time, it's like a child has been ignored. We pay attention to it, it gets scared. You have to show that you mean well. And then it will show which, what potentials it has. The Buddha found that those potentials could go all the way to awakening. So you can check to see for yourself how far are the potentials of your own breath, how far can they go. They're right here. Try to make the most of them. <laughs>